Hi folks, Scott Sager with you here again today. We're in the RTC studios where we've got another great guest. Today we have Mel Hall with us and he's running for your Indiana Congressional District 2 seat on the uh, Democratic ticket this fall, correct? United States Congress. Not yes. United States Congress. Sure. Thank you very much. Sure. So let's jump right in, Mel, and talk about the district itself. Well, the district itself, is, mm -hmm. itself, as you may know, is made up of 10 counties. Yes. Uh, Laporte, St. Joe, Elkhart, and then we come down from uh, Marshall, Fulton, Miami, Wabash, Kosciuszko, Stark, Pulaski, uh, and that's about oh, 4,000 square miles. 4,000 square uh, miles. And about 650,000 uh, folks in the district. Excellent. Not that I would know, but I have traveled all over this district a lot. Uh, and, uh, and I grew up, but yeah. not far out of this district. Okay. I go, uh, so there's Wabash County, and then the next county south of that is Grant County. Uh -huh. And I grew up in Grant okay, County. Okay, great. I uh, grew up on a farm there. My dad and mom had 60 acres. Excellent. And uh, I grew up like everybody else around me. Yes. I fed the animals yes. before I went to school. And I just want to be clear. That doesn't mean I had a tough child. It just, <laughs> it just means I grew up like everybody else around yes, me. And my yes. dad then was uh, started as a union carpenter and Gosh. then uh, struck out on his own. And he repaired the homes and the businesses of the doctors and lawyers and business people in Marion. And then the summer times I did what you do when your father's a carpenter. I uh, hung drywall. I, sure. I, I carried shingles. I put on shingles. I dug trenches. I was a hod carrier, and uh, I put myself through Taylor University. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. That's fantastic. So the man definitely has a work ethic, right? That's been inbred in you since uh, early well, childhood. Well, it, I, I do, and, and I will tell you, that's actually one of the reasons why I'm running for this job. Yeah. Uh, I think it may surprise a lot of folks that Congress only works about three days a week. Yeah. And where I... And they get full-time benefits mm -hmm. and phenomenal health care and a pension. Mm -hmm. And where I come from, that's not called full-time work. That's called light work mm -hmm. or part-time work with full-time benefits. And I think we ought to expect more yeah. from our elected officials than working three days a week and getting the kind of benefits that 98% of the folks who live in this district mm -hmm. have no possibility of ever getting. I understand. And so I just think we ought to level the playing field and hard work. Uh, and so a little bit more of my background. Please. After after uh, graduating from Taylor, I went to seminary. And uh, at my uh, choosing, I'm a United Methodist, I was, uh, I was placed in Detroit's poorest and most densely oh, no populated kidding. community. And for... Seven years I lived there. Both of my sons were born there. This is an area that's about 10 blocks by 13 blocks. 33,000 people. Wow. Almost all of them living in, uh, in apartment buildings. Mm -hmm. and, but that's probably that experience mm -hmm. is what helped me become a relentless pragmatist. Sure. Because one couldn't think about solving all the problems of that impoverished neighborhood, much less all of Detroit. But how do you go from here to here? How do you make sure to keep the kids in school and mm -hmm. off the streets? How do you make sure that those who went through the job training program actually had a job and mm -hmm. then knew how to keep a job? Absolutely. How do you make sure that those who lived in substandard housing at least got into an apartment building where they turned right. the heat on on October the 15th? How do you go from here to here? Just get something done right. to make improvement, continuous improvement. Yeah. And so that led me back to Indiana to do a degree at Notre Dame okay. in data science. And then I uh, started at a small company. Uh, I was employee number 34 at Press Ganey, okay. which is a company that measures patient satisfaction for hospitals all across the country. Well, it does now. When I started, we had 50 hospitals. And I, again, I was employee number 34. Wow. I started as manager of research and development and became director of research and development. And then a couple of years later, was asked to run the company. And wow. so I ran the company for 15 years. No kidding. And during that time, we added 800 jobs. Oh, my goodness. And these are jobs where everyone is dedicated to improving mm -hmm. the delivery of health care. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's my background, Whether again, that's whether it's amazing. on the farm mm -hmm. or in as a minister or as a uh, business person of, again, improvement, how to get better, mm -hmm. solving problems fixing things. That's amazing. And I've never run for office before. Okay. I've never aspired to do this. <laughs> but I am convinced mm -hmm. that we can do better than we're doing yeah. now. In fact, I would say we have to do better 
Very good. Uh, Washington's broken. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, in the spirit of brutal honesty, <laughs> both parties are to blame. Sure. Uh, as a Democrat, sometimes Democrat will say, well, it's all the other party's sure. fault. Or a Republican might say, well, it's all the other party's fault. My belief is both parties are to blame mm. for the dysfunction we have in Washington. So yeah. to that end, yeah. I've already said to the leadership of my own party in the House, in the person of Nancy Pelosi, that I would not support her for leader of the party. Okay. And that I believe, from my background, if you do the same thing with the same people, yes. you're going to get the same results. Of course you will. So that's what I'm about. I'm about doing something yeah. different. And uh, I know I'm a different kind of candidate. Again, never having run for office before, I've already said... Not interested in serving there the rest of my uh, right. life. I've already term limited myself mm -hmm. to three terms. Okay. I won't take corporate PAC money. Okay. Uh, again, we ought to work five days a week. I think you, it ought to be required that if you're a congressperson, you have to have a quarterly town hall meeting. Okay. Required. Even. Required. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the current representative hasn't had a town hall meeting for five years. Okay. I think if you're in Congress, you ought to have to report out every month mm -hmm. with whom you met mm -hmm. and the reason why you mm -hmm. met. Because I think it's transparency sure. and accountability, which, again, uh, is what I've tried to build That's my fantastic. career on. That's fantastic. I, I think the only thing that I would add to that is that that blame of both the Democrat and Republicans um, in Washington, I think that some of that blame falls back to the voters to a certain degree. It does. It's our government. We run it. If we, if they're not doing it right, we should be the governors of that and tell That's them. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. That's our responsibility. Yeah. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've been a, I've been a data guy mm -hmm. my whole life, and uh, used to have a sign at Press Ganey, which comes from a, a quality improvement guru, Deming, which, which is. In God we trust, all others bring data. <laughs> so that's sort of how we ran uh, Press Game. It's how we're also running this, uh, this campaign. But just on the point you made, you perhaps you know this. 2014, mm -hmm. the last time we had a non-presidential election, mm -hmm. Indiana ranked 50th in voter turnout. Yeah. Dead last. Yeah. And to your point, that's on us. Yes. And we can make a difference we if we want to. We definitely can. Uh, I think locally we were in the 30s, and I think that that was a high point. Um, I think it was 28% across the state. Yeah, and, and, you know, that's the thing that, you know, we're doing these interviews for you out there so that you can get to know the candidates, so that when you're looking at a ballot, you actually can associate um, a face, maybe some uh, of their platform mm -hmm. with that name. But uh, more importantly, it's to get you involved out there, whether you're um, a volunteer in the process, uh, whether you're like Phyllis Bittinger, uh, volunteering and spending all of her time being a party chair, the involvement is the important thing. And that's what I preach right here is, is that we need that. And that's, uh, again, part of the reason why I'm running. Mm -hmm. I have been interested in politics my whole life. Mm -hmm. I have followed, and I don't know that I should say this publicly or not, but okay. sometimes I have complained about the quality of candidates yes. that run. Yes, once uh, or twice. <laughs> but... I feel like I have to do this. Mm -hmm. I have been fortunate in my life. Mm -hmm. I learned from my grandmother a long time ago, uh, an expression that actually comes from the Bible, to whom much is given, much is required. Yes. And I think each of us are called to give back. I agree. And that's part of what I'm doing. Good. Uh, and that's what I think we need in Washington, a spirit of trying to get something done. Mm -hmm. Don't worry so much about the parties because mm -hmm. we do have a group over here, it seems like, and another mm -hmm. group over mm -hmm. here, and mm -hmm. it seems like they yell at each other yeah. all the time. <laughs> and sometimes it seems like they only listen to, this group listens to a single television mm -hmm. station, and this mm -hmm. group may listen to a single mm -hmm. television. I think most people in our district are sort of somewhere in here, maybe a little so bit too. one side of the line mm -hmm. or a little bit side mm -hmm. of the other. But I think most of us want to get something done. Yeah, we're all a little bit more towards the middle than, than what we're seeing, that's I right. think, from the national press and the national ranker right now. But um, that's, that's just fantastic. Well, thank you. Well, folks, this is Mel Hall, um, a guy who, if nothing else, he's born and bred in Indiana, and he's, uh, he's taken his licks here and learned how to... Uh, run a business at a high level, uh, of course, you've gone and seen the human condition and the human plight, mm -hmm. and you want to simply do something better. And I appreciate that calling. I really Thank do. Thank you very much. Uh, it's something that I hope more of you aspire for. 
um, politics. It's, it seems like a dirty and ugly word, but it, it's politics and it's government that has made America the greatest nation on the earth. It and has. And needs to continue to improve it. It has. I believe in our country. Mm -hmm. I believe in our form of government. And it's up to us to make it what we want it to be. And I'm Absolutely. just thrilled to be part of the process. Excellent. Mel Hall. Again, stay tuned here on RTC TV4. We'll have tons of interviews for you this year, more than ever, with the candidates that are going to be on your ballot this November. So thanks again for watching.